Hey everybody, welcome back to yet again another beautiful D2 talk. I am very excited today because my guest needs no introduction. I'm very happy to know him in person. I'm very proud to be able to call him a friend. He is the founder of Brick Visuals, a company based in Budapest. His name is Andras Kaldos, sorry, one of the founders of Brick together with Attila. Attila, I'm not gonna pronounce your last name because otherwise I'm gonna butcher it. Very excited about this interview because Andras to me really is one of the most inspiring figures in, uh, in the business. He has built this company basically in a period where architecture visualization was already going into a stage of like late adoption in terms of innovation. Brick positions themselves into a uh, category of services relatively higher to other companies. Anyway, it's um, I really don't want to steal much from the interview itself. I am very excited to have Andras on our show. Ladies and gentlemen, enough of me, blah, 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 blah. Andras Kaldos from Brick Visual. I'm getting psychologically ready for this because this is a great moment in the history of interviews. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> Andras, so, how are you? Okay. Fine, everything is fine. How are you, Fabio? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. A little bit tired. I'm a little bit, uh, so to say, jet lagged because lately I've been uh, I've been hiring a um, uh, what do you call it a um, uh, art director to coach me a little bit on some aspects of like 3D modeling and and so on. Mm. He's a guy that works at uh, motion picture company London. Oh. And the only time that he can teach me um, is late at night because, of course, he does very long hours. Mm. So my course goes from 11 to 1 o'clock at night. And in the night, I'm like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and getting up, it's so freaking hard in the, in the morning. But, you know, we had this interview and I was very excited to, to, to be given this chance to talk to you that I said, okay, you know, we have to do it and we have to make it uh, Thanks as for the good as possible. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Now, you know that I'm um, probably sometimes too much, a little bit of a fan of yours, uh, the, the way you built your company, the way you have built your team. Uh, I, there are so many things that I respect about everything that you have done that I think it's a, it's a privilege really to have this conversation. Although, you know, in the real life, this is the internet. In the real life, we know in person. I came to visit you as well in the in the office. Yeah, and when I was when, when when I wasn't here. I, I know. I was on my computer. I I was boss for one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, um, let's get to the interview, shall we? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I have a couple of questions that are on the other side of the. Okay, I'll just, I'm gonna do an introduction about you, but I don't think that you need it. Basically, Andras is the founder of Brick. You and who else found the company? Attila. Oh, okay, so Attila is your uh, direct uh, co-founder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and the company is based in Budapest. Uh, how many artists do you have at the moment? In terms of artists, we have 36 or something. Okay. Altogether, we are 55, something. 55 yeah. people, because yeah. you guys uh, do a lot of activities inside the uh, the, the company, beside um, uh, visualizations and animation. You also have to deal with like uh, uh, ren mm -hmm. a render farm that you have. Yeah, we have an R&D team. We have a VFX guy as well in the office. And of course, we have a quite big sales team. So let's call it the back office. Uh, we have a financial controller, controller, a financial officer, so, you know, this is serious <laughs> business uh, setup. <laughs> you know, this is something that uh, you and I have always been uh, talking about, you know, the business side of things. And I think there is a lot of uh, interesting stuff going on with your company. I remember I was having a conversation with, uh, with a guy based in Vienna. And this guy was telling me, you know, how difficult it is to create an office in Vienna because all the companies in the in the Eastern European countries were charging so little money. And he was like, yeah, don't you see like these guys from Brick? And I was thinking to myself, ah, oh, fuck, <laughs> you know, 
you actually pay more for a brick image than you will pay for an image in uh, in uh, in Vienna. Vienna is actually cheap for the the, the stuff that we do in yeah. comparison yeah. to what yeah. you guys offer. Exactly. And, exactly. But how did how did you manage to build such a, uh, a successful business? Although I was reading a couple of days ago that Hungary basically has uh, the same uh, GDP as Mexico. Like mm-hmm. in Mexico, on average, people earn around eight hundred to one thousand dollars a month, which mm. is more or less what people earn in uh, in uh, in uh, in Hungary as well, right? On average, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah, because I was a little bit afraid to bring the comparison because you know uh, people get very sensitive these days. <laughs> no, I love Mexico. I was there this uh, year. And Mexico... I know you were talking there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was fantastic. No, it's. Uh, I have a lot of friends uh, from Mexico, and I so look forward to go and visit it myself as well. Mm. Anyway, so tell me, how did you did you manage to get to the point where you guys are right now? I have no idea. <laughs> no. uh, you know, okay, of course, you know, today I can be really clever and say that my strategy was this and that and I was so, you know, focused on this and of course things happening without, uh, you know, deciding strategy to big things at the beginning and that's happened. So, so first of all, you know, being uh, in a good time in the right place with the right people is is the is is the biggest uh, advantage yeah. uh, and that's happened with us so I, I i have to be honest in this case uh, probably if i would start a company right now here in hungary i would i wouldn't be able to build up this right now because of course the market the industry changed hungary's changed uh, the the possibilities the opportunities have changed uh Okay, let's see. Uh, first of all, when we started uh, Brick, I think we had a clear vision what we wanted to do, what wanted to do, and it was a, a typical Hungarian behavior, uh, which was actually saying that uh, what we don't want to do, and <laughs> uh, because that's a typical Hungarian behavior, and the, and the only thing what we didn't want to do is to to do business in Hungary and really build up uh, something on the Hungarian market. And of course, we knew that we want to, want to, want to do high-end stuff. We, I, I have 10 years experience in uh, architecture visualization already. So when I decided to do this, uh, it was for me, it was really clear that I want to, you know, work with the coolest and best best. Uh, architecture offices around the world, uh, but I, we also knew that that most probably we had uh, we had we will have rough rough, rough times, and especially at the beginning because because uh, we didn't have that much connection, international connections, uh, just only with Hungarian uh, uh, offices, architect offices. So 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 it was an intentional act that we immediately started uh, for look for uh, sales power so we we started to find uh, try to find agents sales agents who are really you know keen to to sell our uh, services and, and and actually we were lucky uh, not just once but twice or three times and we we, we find uh, quite motivated agents uh, of course it was a big uh, uh, big cost for us for a long time for 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 many years because we had we had to pay a huge amount of commission for yeah. the salesperson. But thanks for this, basically within one year, we we managed to go quite uh, quite uh, effectively. Uh, also, we didn't know that at that time, but. But uh, uh, Hungary uh, in 2012 was the, the, the industry and the whole economics was not in a really good shape, mm-hmm. and uh, we are making every year lots of architects in the universities, and they had to find a job, uh, also good ones, talented ones, and and many many are uh, many of the fresh graduated architects. Uh, decided to change uh, profession and be a uh, uh, 3D 
artist or, 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 or something like this. And thanks to this, we had basically many, uh, uh, many guys on the market, uh, talented guys in the Hungarian market, uh, hungry for good work, hungry for 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 nice projects, and and and, and it was easy at the beginning to recruit these talented guys because mm -hmm. it was a perfect match, uh, and slowly, basically. Uh, we managed to 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 build up a good portfolio with better and better names. At this time, at that time, uh, for the first two three years, actually we had a mixed portfolio. Well, uh, the first two three years, we are talking about 2011, 2012, 2013. 2012, 13, 14. Okay. Uh, we had we had a big portfolio. Our our projects came from uh, the USA and then from the Norwegian market mainly, uh, and it was a quite mixed portfolio. So we worked with uh, developers for commercial purposes, and we worked with architects for okay, how can I call it? Design communication purposes. Okay. Uh, and <clears throat> and basically in fifteen we 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 started to make some bigger decisions. And then, and then I, I think in 15, we, uh, uh, beginning of 15, uh, we started to really build up a, a more, more serious uh, uh, and focused business structure and mindset. Uh, and also, you know, really uh, set up the, the, the long-term goals for what we really want to become. What is our, our motto? What is our, long-term uh, goal uh, to shoot the stars. Uh, I actually and, saw that, you know, like I, I remember these also reflected on the way you ramped up, for instance, your social media game, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, that, and I think at that time it, it became clear that, first of all, uh, this is just my opinion, uh, and, and of course this is just a niche market in, in 3D, but 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 I, I, I in my mind uh, this market is split in two half uh, into two uh, species. One one of them is uh, working for commercial purposes. Uh, so working mostly with developers or even advertisement companies and basically doing uh, uh, projects for marketing for marketing purposes. And the other half of the story, which is basically. I think it's a smaller market working with architects for design communication purposes. And these two things, you know, it's, there's no Chinese wall between it, but, 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 but actually it has a different goal. And, uh, and for us, that, that's, that's the goal, to work with the best architect offices around the world and work on, on cool projects, uh, unique projects, and, and really help uh, be a app for these architects to do the design communication. And I'm, 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 you know, I'm saying it design communication thing and not uh, visualization as a yeah. product. Because, because I believe that, that uh, you know, if you say that the architecture visualization studio can be uh, in the future, will be either a advertisement company actually. Because, because you know, you, the, the good ones, the high profile ones, uh, can they are not able to remain just an artist, or, or of, of course, maybe small companies, yes, but the bigger ones. Yeah, we're I, I, talking about uh, differentiation. This is something yeah. that, uh, from a business point of view, it is inevitable at one point, you know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If you, if you look at uh, there's a good example. Uh, 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 D box, for example, they're they're typical. They they started as an artist guys, and now they are basically an agency. It's no question. And it's like similar uh, screen topers or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, and I, we try to go in another direction and saying that maybe right now there is no, no not a service like design communication service for architects but i believe in the future you need you need a you need a mediator mm. who is helping you and i'm 
helping the architect to communicate the design to help you know not just do products but do more uh, because at the end uh, the, these really cool architect offices became uh, much more than before they they are a brand they are they are they are you know it's, if you're talking about small hat or big now the developers are uh, asking them to design their building not just because uh, they are good architects or they do the best design they're buying a brand yeah. that's now nowadays more valuable and if you can really uh help them to you know really shine this brand then 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 that's the right place for us and that's that's why the guys in the office are really keen on this because they most of them are architects they have the same purpose same goal as me uh so we are having fun if we work with these offices it's uh no it's, i totally uh, i totally get it you know and it's uh, sometimes we sometimes we forget the implication that brands have within other brands like for instance you know ferrari when uh, they were hiring a good designer to design a ferrari this designer would be pinin farina for instance you know so the the way they built up the quality of the brand was hiring better people to do the job that they are supposed to deliver and i think this is some sort of like inception of our job but i i personally can see it you know how the architect will design high-end um, uh, designs for a developer which is already a big name and then eventually in the process you get the visualization from the very good visualization studio because everything gets connected in a way you know you yeah. cannot uh, uh, i see a lot of um, uh, very young architects uh, failing on communicating their projects because they don't see the un uh, they don't understand the role that the communication of the project has in selling the project you know so exactly. maybe they also come up with a very good design, but they never really get to the point to uh, make themselves a brand, which is ultimately what really gives value to their work, you know? Exactly, exactly. And that's and, and, and this from this point, it's not anymore just you know doing high steel images because we saw in many cases that there are other areas when architects are failing, even good ones. Uh, to, to really overall communicate their design. Just imagine when they do a competition. Yes, they put, they print out these big prints with our visualization, but there are uh, two or three other boards that they show to the to the judges with really shitty graphic design with, you know, fast sequence and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if you imagine that if, if we are the company who is helping them to communicate their design and not just products, not just the steel image, but help them to improve their communication method. Uh, eventually, we will, I think we will help them to do the whole thing uh, for them. Yeah. And, and then the next level of this is not just do the graphic design to have a better facade drawing, but also uh, explain now what is the best way to explain the thing what you just told us and we understand because we are, uh, we are architects. And that's uh, and that's uh, and then then also showing them what are other ways to communicate in design. And that's VR, AR, other interactive solutions. Uh, uh, and that's one side. Second side, uh, and we started this is uh, you know the, the life of a project is really long, where lots of parties are involved: uh, the investor, developer, architect. Uh, builder and and the life is really long and 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 actually in uh, in lot of uh, doing this life of the project there are many occasions where you need visualization or or something like that and uh, and and we started now a small experiment and we're doing it this for three or four months with Gensler so uh -huh. uh, I know the, that's the biggest architecture office in the world huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Andras, do you mind, because when you move now, the microphone moved a little bit, so I'm losing a okay. little bit. Yeah. yeah. Is it better now? It sounds a little bit better, yes. Okay. Uh, so, so you know, uh, we started to uh, work with them in a, 
in different terms. So they didn't order images. They said, we have a project. We dedicated one or two persons for them. Uh, uh, and and basically, they, they're using them to follow their design decisions. And, ah, and then yeah, they, they can constantly use our guys to, to do drafts, visualization drafts, show it to the client. And then we do like two or three design variations, following up the things, give them the flexibility. Uh, the, the end result will be a high-end image, but we're helping them in an earlier process, not yeah. just, you know, the design is ready. Oh yeah, there will be some changes in the model, but don't worry, we will finish it in time. And then you have to do a high-end image in the last yeah. day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, uh, uh, so, and that's uh, I, this is what I like because because actually this is the next level of visualization. This is the yeah. the the future of of this. I have part. I have always like uh, since the very beginning where um, um, you know we we. We came up with this uh, uh, Oculus and uh, the Vive and so on. I've always envisioned uh, the, the future of our profession as being a very close, um, so to say, um, what do you call it, um, consultant for an architecture office, you know, because you, first of all, can communicate in uh, real time the space, you know, from the inside and the person can have the full experience. And you can do that at the very early stage of design because um, personally, at least at the moment, I don't see a lot of potentials in like uh, using these technologies to sell um, you know, because they're clunky and you cannot strap a, a user, make it look like a, a, a matrix uh, kind of a prisoner. Let, let, let's call it, it's, it's lame. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I kind of see a lot more per potentials in the design and decision making phase than actually marketing the building. Then, of course, you know, uh, I'm looking closely at the... the the, the progress that these technologies are making and if uh, they really come up with the, the a type of headset that can allow you to have an experience without having the usability issue in between, then this will be a, a, a deal breaker, you know, and, and everything will be transferred probably in that media. Although, you know, there will be things like uh, still images to support uh, medias that we are used to as, as always. Yeah. Exactly. No, this is very interesting. I'm, uh, I'm actually, I was actually wondering if there were already some people that were doing that kind of service because you. I, I visited, I visited Gensler, for example, uh, uh, end of last year, the beginning of this year, whatever, this year, I think it was this year, and, and we visited uh, many offices. Basically, we were in La, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Oh, and see, no, no, we were not in those centers. We were in Seattle and San Francisco uh, office, and in Oakland as well. That, and I, and, and uh, all, uh, all of the offices, they, they had this vibe in the center of the space. The, and they, they basically, I guess, they used it uh, for these in these early phases to check their design. So, mm -hmm. so. Uh, and they're using Revit most of the time to do their design, and I think they can just, you know, really export it in a, probably a really ugly way. But but for them, it's uh, it's already a, a a tool which probably sometimes they use it. So 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 it's I think they we started to use it. You know, there was a big hype in VR that we know it better. Yeah. Better. Uh, and that's that's natural. And now it's going down and slowly. We will build up this, uh, but it, it won't be that quick what was before with this hype. But now it's going down and we slowly build up this. And, and this is why we have an R&D team here in the office with three people. Really, really let focused. me let me just say what that means, because a lot of people don't know the, the, the shortening. This is research. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm making actually I'm making a video about how to price images. And, okay. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to explain very easily how to create a very simple budget. And yeah. I'm talking about research and development. And I'm really curious to see what uh, artists are going to think when I'm going to say, 
you know, you have to make the client pay for your research and development. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> it will be very funny. No, no but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really willing to start the conversation because I think that, you know, um, I mean, without taking anything away from you, if you guys have managed to build the business that you have, it means that there must be something that you guys are doing better than others. And probably understanding the value of the stuff that you guys produce and the market value of the stuff that you produce, it's a very big help, not only for somebody that is starting out, but also for the rest of the industry so that we know that there is somebody, there is not somebody pushing down the prices. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't think we actually push it down the prices. So, so uh, actually, what we do and the, the service what we give is is if I check the, the definitely the European market, we are somewhere there for sure. And we know that you know to to really maintain an office like this, what we have here in Hungary, uh, you know, we have uh, fifty five people here in the office. Plus, we have another company. Uh, what what I also own. They do it or something else, but 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 altogether in this space we are like sixty five people in one thousand six hundred or one thousand seven hundred square meters. So it's a huge office for sixty five. Huge office, yes. But of course we have the potential to grow in the office. In the other hand, uh, we have a quite big overhead because of this. We have a big render farm that we have to uh, you know maintain and run, and we have. We have a quite big back office as well to to you know to really uh, push brick to the next level and have a, a real serious uh, uh, business uh, strategy uh, year by year. So you know we have a board now. Uh, every quarter we have board meetings with really serious guys. We have to. Uh, yesterday I just uh, uh, we finalized the, the budget for 2018. Uh, and and we're doing the same way how other uh, serious companies doing doing this shit. So so and this is why we have financial controlling as well. And 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 and, uh, and we we try to, to take it serious. But but it means what we see that actually our overhead, maybe the salary is uh, compared to Germany uh, is lower for for CD artists because of course the life living cost is lower. Therefore. Probably are in, we have more flexibility in pricing. Yeah. In the other hand, we have a big over overhead on on top of this. But at the end, we end up in a similar price, like uh, like like others. I'm not comparing myself with me, of course. But 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 uh, Norway is different. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so yeah. So what I think is that uh, uh, actually. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, it matters where you are, but but it more it's more like uh, do you have the logic how you price your stuff? Uh, and the logic can be that yeah yeah I'm hungry so we can give uh, images for a cheaper price. That's not necessarily true because if you think about it, we have good artists who are uh, working on international projects, so. Uh, I'm or we are aware that you know an other Western European artist studio can hand hat on them. It means that I have to you know slowly raise the salaries to a certain level and maybe they will have a much better life here in Budapest. And this is the you know actually a good uh, uh, no brainer for them to stay here because yeah. they, they mm -hmm. get they we push their salaries on the international level. So yeah, and you know, the, the last time that I was in Budapest, I was actually very surprised of how life is becoming a lot more uh, like I don't see basically the difference anymore if I'm in uh, Budapest, uh, Vienna or um, München, you know, it, it, the no, no, I, Fabio, I see the difference. Budapest is much cooler. No, <laughs> no, but you you get what I'm saying, right? That uh, the, the the lifestyles and everything. So I I get what you're saying. Also, you know, I have sent you this um this survey to do, 
Yeah. And uh, I've been doing this now for almost a week. Uh, yeah. I've had together about 80 surveys from 80 different people. And I mean, the difference in the location where you're located can account for more or less 20% of an image. So yeah. an, an image can be 20% cheaper, say, in China, India, South America. And we're talking about artists that actually work because you know you can get the artist that is working in a in a small apartment somewhere in Hong Kong and doesn't know anything and he will offer you an image for a hundred dollars but that guy is not going to last in the long run you know unless he understands that the price of an image is that one and you cannot change it like you know you cannot say I'm 50% cheaper and expect to have a a, a normal growth uh, throughout the years you understand what I mean? It, absolutely it's you know it's more what what uh, you're saying is um of course we're talking about high profile high profile so, yeah we're not talking about you know uh yeah but you know don't forget that the high profile is a niche market in the yeah. business so so you know uh, uh when i think the location matters if he if he if he if you're talking about low lower quality where, where you can do images, not depending on the artist's talent, but actually how, what kind of factory chain you can build up uh, and, and determine the quality by the factory chain. That one yeah. should be in the East on the, on the cheapest uh, uh, work uh, uh, cost, uh, yes. of course. But, but when I'm talking about high profile, it's uh, there is not huge difference at yeah. the end. The end gear of this, is and and uh, and I don't think we have dramatically lower prices, uh, especially in the U European market. The USA is different, of course. But, yeah, but USA yeah. and uh, Oceania, Oceania, Oceania. They're basically elite. At least that's what I'm uh, looking at. But anyway, these things I already knew them a couple of years ago. Uh, doing this survey again kind of confirmed the the, the situation. The cool mm. thing, the cool thing is that uh, at the moment, at the moment we're seeing sort of like uh, the European market understanding a little bit how you know this works, and this might be good because you know um, we have very good clients in Europe, and I think that the clients that are more focused on like uh, having a security that they, the work they're buying is actually good, they're saying, okay, you know what? Let's not keep looking for the cheap option. Let's just go with the one that works and that can ensure us to continue growing in the direction that we want to grow. Exactly, exactly. It's, uh, <clears throat> we, uh, you know, we have, of course, mixed experience. So, so we just uh, finished a small, tour in Norway, visiting some uh, good architect offices in Norway. Of course, I'm not talking about Snow Hatta, uh, uh, but other small ones, local ones. And then we could see there that uh, there are Eastern European com uh, companies uh, who, are, uh, who are actually pushing the dry prices dramatically, small ones. And we are not necessarily able to follow that uh, the that, 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 that prices. Uh, but but one thing is true that these studios are good architect studios, but but not on the top notch level. They doing quality work, and for that, basically they need they they their design. They don't need that extra stuff yeah. on top of it where they have to use near you can the beats or hopefully us. Uh, uh, You're very humble. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reality. <laughs> <laughs> you also accept that we are better than you. So, I have to ask <laughs> <that>. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, so, you know, like, like there are, you know, certain markets where we can see already uh, the effect of, of that small studios going up and this is a niche market and and they cutting the prices down but but again uh if we if you really check the top of it at the end we, we can offer more 
uh, and that's where where we have to be and just leave the the, the places where there were our other good companies uh, even from the eastern european region mm -hmm. who can who can do uh, even 20 percent lower price or 30 percent lower price okay whatever it will be we are not competitive there we 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 gave up lots of things during these five years where we said Okay, <laughs> yeah. that's not our, our view, and we still, you know, I read an article that I didn't know if it's uh, true or not, but they said that in 2018 there will be 25% um, uh, growth in, in the 3D real estate market. Okay. Uh, I don't know how they measured it. Uh, they said uh, by 2018 uh, the whole market was worth around uh, 9 point. Eight billion dollars. So if I check our income, I would say if we have zero point zero one percentage of this market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but this goes to show that you know there is work for everybody. I just think that people don't realize it. You know. Yeah. 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 Andras, only one thing. Usually, I'm trying to make these uh, interviews about 30 minutes long. I should have told you probably in the very beginning. No, we... you didn't. Told <laughs> you. I told you really one hour. So, <laughs> uh, so we already. T no, it's just because you know we look a lot at the uh, uh, Google statistics, and you know I don't want to take a lot of time away from you if then people don't watch the whole thing through the end. I think mm. it's only because you know people have that amount of time during the day. Uh, that you can, can cut. You can cut the unnecessary part. <laughs> the, it, there is no unnecessary part. Also, <laughs> if you want me to cut a video that it's uh, one hour long, it usually takes me like I have to watch it at least four or five times. Oh, okay. It's like five hours of working, cutting. And <laughs> don't don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, but anyway, the thing is that, you know, um, it, it, there is so much that I would still like to ask you. Uh, would it be okay if we say would do another interview with more specific direct questions, maybe in the future after the holiday, so that, you know, we can sure. continue sure. talking? Sure. Because uh, you see, the thing is that um, I really believe that um, we have passed that tipping point where people manage to get all the information to understand how to make the work so you know the quality is pretty high even if you're just starting out right now it's all about talking how to make business because you know it's uh, if you don't do that then you might find yourself especially if you're young in the position where you say i don't make any money i give up i move into another uh, field yeah. you know yeah, sure and yeah. of course people are free to do that but I think that there is a lot of talented guys that uh, could benefit a little bit from talking about, you know, how to get a little bit of uh, guidance and how to, 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 to manage to, to start working in the business without killing themselves. We are, we are ha I'm, I'm happy and we are happy to share this, this knowledge. Of course, you know, Brick is at the end, uh, we have the office is full of artists and cool guys and every day on on operative level, we're doing art here, and I would uh, happy to talk about that one as well. But I understand that probably uh, uh, for 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 what is interesting in Brick is definitely the size of the company and uh, that business mindset. But yeah. we have additional, so so uh, so just don't have a full. A false picture about us that I'm always talking about business and no 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 <laughs> but you know I think that uh, you know if people misunderstand this they probably should look into your work a little bit more to to kind of have a real picture of what you guys are all about and to be yeah. honest at least from my side and I say this to everybody so you know it's not only something that I'm saying to you it looks like a place where People have a lot of fun, you know, where when they work. Then I don't know if you're an asshole as a boss, <laughs> but at least, you know, when I got there and I visited your office, I really had this impression that people were engaged and they were talking to each other. And, you know, and they were, uh, it, it was really like the, the looking at them working, I felt like, okay, so, you know, maybe this is a place where you can really grow also on a personal level. 
Yeah, I think so. <laughs> no, 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 don't, no, don't ask now the people because we are fucking over. <laughs> Probably you would have a different opinion if you come today to the office. How you feel here? Oh. Now, you know, I'm talking very well about you. Now comes a guy with a gun and he goes like, Andres, <laughs> come to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah uh, I agree with you. I mean, uh, you know, this is also uh, a key element of brick that we have to uh, able to to not just maintain these, these, these guys here and re uh, stay, make them stay here, uh, uh, but, but also we have to grow we need to follow the market needs so you know growing now is not a cool thing you have to do it i mean for brick for sure and not global but but for brick we need to go and you know growing now 20 percent from one year to another it's a must That's, it's not yeah. not like and for that we need to go uh, we need to add more members to the team and we have to uh really implement them and having the same car you know maintain the same culture the good environment that you experience and that's challenging that's really hard that's and that's what, what i think uh, the, the hard thing in this case and and it's on every level is that uh the we, we don't have we, we don't have examples. We cannot copy paste and see that okay, all the other company is doing, because in this size, we, this production team is quite big, and high and, and in this high profile uh, uh, market, there is no big company like us. But if you can tip and tell me some companies who are the same size and doing the same job. I am happy to. <laughs> uh, now, on top of my head, I can think of like, um, you know, uniform, the, the neighborhood, oh. but the neighborhood, yeah. you know, you heard they probably going to shut down soon. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't want to cook the paste on them. <laughs> Yeah, but I think I think that on on their side it's more of a spiritual thing. And actually, I would like to I would like to dig into this and maybe do an interview also with them to talk about you know the the reasons behind this. I don't know. I'll try to find some of my contacts and see if I could get an interview also with them because it's also interesting to hear the the other side of the story. You know, at the moment yeah. you guys are doing. Uh, very well, but there are some people that probably have been in the business for 20 years, so they have experienced the cultural shift, and maybe this could also be an interesting thing to, to discuss. Exactly. One more thing, behind you, there is a picture of Victor Enrich. Yeah, and it's, uh, I, I've just, uh, it's an original one, so. Really? Oh, I'm gonna really I'm gonna order one too because I mean the Victor is a fantastic artist. Yeah, I also asked him to give a, a holiday uh, greetings for the for the. Oh concert. really? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Really nice. I look forward yeah. to see that video. <laughs> <laughs> I will send it. I will send it. It's, it's, we have many good guys. Also, Jeff is uh, gave, gave me a nice uh, holiday greeting. So it's really nice. Andras, listen, uh, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to stop the recording now so that, you know, people can uh, can enjoy this video. Um, I scheduled to publish your video probably in, uh, you know, I don't want to do it during the holidays because people will mm. be eating turkey at home. So probably by the New Year's, it will probably be the first video cool. that we publish, okay? Cool. And just let me know. Yeah, just let me know if you want to do another. I didn't know if we have only 30 minutes. It's so, just because, you know, I I don't know if these last 10 minutes people are going to watch it. Because on average, we have 26 minutes watch time. 30 minutes oh. is the ideal video, the one with the most clicks. Ah, yeah, I got it. Uh, okay. So, you know, it's... Uh, but anyway, it, you know, sometimes I also realize that... Uh, you just have to do it, and then if people really want to watch it, they will watch it. Uh, for, for now, yeah. we're just trying to optimize this whole mechanism. But you know, okay. maybe in the future, okay. if you do it one hour long, it will it will work. I have no idea. But anyway, of course, we will talk with each other, and we will make sure to make another one. Maybe I'll come up with some questions. We can talk about this, and you sure. can make it better. Okay. If That's people. Really nice. 
Oh, uh, it was really nice for me to have you. <laughs> if people okay. want to look for you, where can they find you? You, Brick? On the internet. <laughs> 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 this, is, this is where you tell me, okay, you can find me at www. <laughs> where can, yeah, I'm, you know, they can find me in most of, most of the conferences, so probably they will find me on D2. <laughs> <laughs> I did not pay you to say that. <laughs> uh, I, I have a personal Facebook account and public, so you can just uh, send me a request. And most I will put everything on the screen for you. Yeah, so, so, so that's it. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording and then I'm gonna say goodbye to you, okay? Yeah. Thanks okay, a lot sure. for doing this, Andres. Thank, thank you, thanks. Bye.